You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. I'm Graham Pluley, and I'm a computer security writer, podcaster, and public speaker. Back in those days, you learned how to program by buying a magazine at the local newsagent and spending hours and hours over the weekend laboriously typing in the basic commands. And this is how I learned how to to program computers. And I loved it. And I started writing computer games for my friends. I actually began to write games which were, in a way, a mixture of both programming and literature. I, I got into what's called interactive fiction or more commonly maybe text adventure games and after a while I began to sell those text adventure games and those adventure games ended up on the front discs of uh, magazines and I would say at the end of them look if you really like the game um, why not send me uh, five quid or ten quid and I'll I'll help you get further in the game or I'll send you a map and then one day a package arrived on my doorstep from a guy called Alan Solomon who had played my games and my life changed forever. I was immensely lucky. And inside the parcel, it had a cheque for £20, which is more than I ever asked for, and a copy of Dr. Solomon's antivirus toolkit and a letter saying, if you want a job, let me know. And so I rang him up and I went for an interview and he gave me a job and I was his first ever Windows programmer. So for a few years, I was writing Dr. Solomon's Antivirus Toolkit for Windows. But what they noticed was that I think actually I was at a particular show where we were launching the product And I would see the salespeople demonstrating my software, my creation. And I'd think, they're not showing the good bits. And so I said to them, you know, do you mind if I have a go? And so they let me have a go on the stage. And soon there was a bit of a crowd around as I explained and talked through my magnificent bitmaps, which I'd designed and and, and things like that. So I think I sort of bullied my way in time out of the programming department. So I made this great big jump. Over time, I became more and more the public face of Dr. Solomon's talking to the press, uh, describing what was going on in the world of cybercrime, uh, writing articles, and generally just doing doing tap dances, effectively. Um, and then one sad day, uh, the company got bought. And frankly, I think I lasted about six weeks. After a period of gardening leave, um, I decided to go and join Sophos for about half the salary, but three times the fun. I I wasn't involved in any of the programming at Sophos, but I was involved in uh, the social media activity. And probably the primary thing of all was something which myself and uh, Carol Terrio, who now co-hosts a podcast with me, Smashing Security, uh, we set up a blog called Naked Security. At the time, it was something a bit different, to be honest. Um, When we launched it, there weren't many technology companies who were writing every single day about what was going on, what was going on in terms of threats, and trying to explain them in simple language. We were trying to explain these things in in a way which, you know, an intelligent child would understand. Because I've always felt there's been a problem where by nerds are speaking to other nerds. And I don't think that's the solution to the cybersecurity problem. I think we have to be able to communicate to everybody. Effectively, my career now involves writing articles, making podcasts, and giving public presentations. Um, that's, That's what I do. And people, thank goodness, are interested in what I have to say or how I say it. And so they're asking me to keep doing that. I wish I had gone independent sooner. 
has been an interesting new challenge, and I, I, I wish I'd had the confidence to do that sooner and to carve my own career. There's all kinds of challenges like that because I'm basically a one-man company now. Things like networking are so much more important than it used to be. I'm naturally quite introverted. If you, if, you know, if I don't know you, I'm quite quiet and shy, and I'll I'll hang out in the kitchen or something. I don't really like to go to parties and things like that. You know, I like to be around. I'm good with the people I know, but I'm not so good with people I don't know. And so I find myself at events now, and I sort of push myself and say, "Okay, I don't know anybody here, but maybe I should just go and chat to someone." There's there's still that twelve year old computer programmer inside me who feels a little bit scared about doing that sometimes. But you know, I think we all have to be a little bit bolder sometimes. Mm-hmm.